Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital, and today we're building an Arduino grade crossing. Okay everyone, quick announcement, I am having my 500 subscriber contest and you do have to subscribe to be eligible. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and hit that like button so that you don't miss any of the updates, including ones about the contest. So last week, I built an Arduino based block signal and this is gonna use a lot of the similar principles. It also uses a lot of the same parts. It's got a slightly different configuration from the block signal, but it's very, very similar. So if you haven't already watched that Arduino block signal, I'm gonna link that right up here as well as in the description below. That'll give you a lot of pointers and how to basically how to get this thing started. All right, I do have to give a big shout out to YouTube user The Tech Operator. He pointed out that I did not show resistors in the circuit that I had built, and they are very, very important for protecting your LEDs from too much current. Now, the reason that I didn't is because most of the signals, including the ones that I link in the description below, do have a built-in resistor. The ones that I link have them built in on the common anode wire. But thank you so much, YouTube user, the tech operator. Go ahead and give him a quick subscribe. I'll link his channel in the description below. Okay, let's get right down to this. We're gonna go ahead and place our infrared sensors. And then we're gonna hook up our power to these sensors. Now, if you remember correctly, these strips are the common areas for positive and negative. So we're going to take our five volt right here, and we're going to connect it to the positive side of this strip. Then we're gonna take and connect one of our grounds to the negative side of this strip. So that entire strip is powered now. We're then going to take a positive and connect it to VCC, which in this case is on the right side of the infrared sensors. And then we're going to connect up the ground, which is the center pin on these sensors. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other sensor. Now remember, so long as the solid lines are there, you have power that is connected. When the lines break, it goes into two different sections. Okay, so next we have to connect up the sensors and we're going to connect the sensor output, which is the left pin, into our analog pin. In this case, we're going to connect it into a0 and then we're going to connect the other sensor into analog pin A1. Okay, so your infrared sensors are now wired. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take two red LEDs so that we can figure out and demonstrate how we can get the flashing crossing signal. Now remember, we're hooking these up through a common anode or common positive, which is the longer pin on these LEDs. So the longer pin is the positive and the shorter pin is the negative or the ground. So let's go ahead and hook these in. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to make sure that I have the ground and the positive spread out enough so that there's no confusion. And I want to make sure that those positive pins are on the same little row so that I can just connect one pin to them. All right, so we're going to be using pins six and five. So we're going to connect pin six to one of the LEDs grounds. And then we're going to connect pin five to the other LEDs ground. And next, we're gonna be hooking up our common anode or our common positive, and we're gonna be running that out of pin eight. And we're actually gonna hook that up on this side because we need to install a resistor in between. And I have a 1K resistor right here, and I'm gonna jump that from one side to the other. Remember, those sections of rows are isolated electrically. 
these two sides, they do not connect, they do not, so we have to jump across them, and I'm doing that with the resistor. All right, let's head over to the computer and do some programming. Alrighty, everyone, we are back in our Arduino programmer, and this program is going to be very similar to the block signal program. So it's got a few little differences, obviously, because it's a crossing signal versus a block signal, but the overall principle is the same. So we're gonna go ahead and start by putting in our integers, which is int since pin one equals a zero. Now you remember that a zero is analog pin a zero on the Arduino. All right, so we're gonna do integer since pin two equals a one. Forgot to put my brackets there. And then we'll do analog pin a1 on the Arduino. Okay, so next we're gonna do our lights. So most crossings are typically red. So let's do integer red one equals pin six. So that's, say that's a light on crossing signal. Then we'll do red two equals five. And then we'll say that that is another light on crossing signal. Obviously, if you're watching another country and you have more than two lights, you would program in multiple ones. And I do believe I have a slight typo here. So we're gonna just go red one like that. That's actually what it's supposed to look like. And then last but not least, we want to do an integer and just establish our power. Since this is going to be a common anode, we're going to say that that's pin eight. Okay, so that's pretty much everything for the setup. So we'll go ahead and do void setup. Then we'll start a bracket. And we'll type serial dot begin 9600. Now, if you don't remember what this is for, I'm going to put a link up here for my previous video that shows you what the serial begin sets up. And that is basically where you can read what the sensor is giving you so that you can tweak the program to what exactly your sensors give off. All right, next we're going to establish our pin mode. Let me actually put a note really quick for you guys so we'll say it enables display of sensor output next we'll do pin mode remember uh, caps is very important we're going to do red one, which we established, is going to be an output. Then we're going to do the same thing for red two. And the same thing for the power pin. And make sure you're putting semicolons after everything here. All right, so that's it for the setup, guys. So we're gonna go ahead and enumerate our light states. So that's E, N, U, M. And we're gonna call those crossing States. And we're going to 
go ahead and start a bracket right there. And we're gonna have st underscore off. And then st underscore flashing one, comma. st underscore flashing two, comma. And st underscore flashing three. So those are our states, and let me basically explain that. Um, what we have here is we're going to need four different states for the signal to be in. One is obviously the off signal. The first flashing is going to be entering the crossing from one direction. The second flashing is going to be entering the crossing from another direction. And then the third flashing is going to happen once the train begins to exit the crossing area. So that's why we need three different flashings and one off for a total of four. So we're going to go ahead and put our semicolon right there. And I'm going to say that and says, um, I'm going to go ahead and put that little note right there for you guys. Okay. Um, and then last but not least, we need to put crossing state crossing state equals st underscore off so it equals off and that is our default state if I can type all right, so let's go ahead and get started on the actual program. So we're going to type void loop. And then we're going to go ahead and start our bracket right there. And then we're going to establish some new integers. So we're going to internal value A1. You know, that's my default and I love it. So we're going to do analog read since pin one. So that's going to give a integer value for our analog sensors. And remember I told you that analog sensors will give off a value between zero and 1023, and this will store that value whenever it reads. And we'll go ahead. Say that right there. And we'll need to do the second one, of course. And just remember it's important. I just noticed that I accidentally capitalized that. And uh, you have to be careful and make sure that you don't do that. Um, all right, so then we need to do serial dot print ln parenthesis value a1 colon, and then that is or semicolon, sorry, and that is the value of the sensor in the serial monitor, which if you remember correctly, is right here. So let's go ahead and do the second one. Serial.println value a2. And then we're just gonna do that once again, we're gonna put the delay of 200. And that's just to give us a little delay of the uh, sensor readings. All right, so let's take a look here. So that's pretty much everything for setting up the loop. So the next thing we need to do is we need to set up a switch. 
So this will switch it between the different states, little mini programs within the program. So we're gonna say we're switching the crossing state. And then we're gonna put a bracket. And then we're gonna say, in this case, state off. colon, regular colon, I had to double check on that one. And then we do crossing off value A1, value A2. And then we'll put break. We're gonna put a little note up here that says Okay, that says, this is establishing where the program goes when a sensor is read. So that's basically what we're doing here. All righty. And then we need to go here and then we need to set up the first one. So we're gonna do case state underscore flashing one colon crossing flashing one parentheses value a one comma value a2 and you're just going to go through and do this over and over until you get everything right so we're going to case state underscore flashing if i can type two underscore two parentheses value a1 value a2. Now what we're doing here is we're just saying that these are the variables that are going to be looked at in these little sections of the program. Then we're going to do case state underscore flashing <laughs> I can't type guys can I? Flashing three colon crossing flashing three and see value a1 value a2 if you watch the block signal video and you did that then you already know all this it's it's pretty close to the same as it was before and it's not going to differ that much so that is everything that we will need right there so that is the end of the basic loop so let's go ahead and start the next loop i'm going to go void crossing So we named the little mini program up in here for crossing off. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And we need to establish integers. So we're gonna do integer value A1. So it's gonna be taking whatever's read up here and using that. And then we're also gonna establish the same thing right there. And then we're gonna put a bracket. Okay, let's see. Yeah. So here's where the program really begins to differ. So we're gonna do digital write red one. So that was one of our lights. Hi, now if you remember correctly, we're doing a common anode signal. So it's kind of the reverse. So we're saying that we need this to be high rather than low. And if you've done Arduino wiring before and you do the cathode hooked up to the, the common wire rather than the anode, you know that it's the reverse. So and then we're gonna do digital right red two high and then digital right whoop, I'm just typing away here on the wrong thing. Power All right, so what this is is the So this is basically saying that 
This is what our lights are doing during this phase of the program. This has them both off. Okay, so now we're gonna do some if-then statements. So we're gonna do if value A1 is less than 500, and remember the double ampersand for and, value A2 is greater than 500, and we're gonna put a bracket. We're gonna say that the crossing state equals st underscore flashing one. And we're just gonna say here, if since pin one is tripped, the program switches to flashing one. And then we just need to do boop and close that one right up. And then we're gonna do else if, so if another thing happens, which is where we say value A1 is greater than 500 and value A2 is less than 500. So the sensor's getting tripped from the other direction. We're gonna say crossing state equals st underscore flashing two. So we're going to the other one. So I'm just gonna copy this little note right here. And we're just gonna say if since bin two is tripped, it was gonna switch over to flashing two. And we can close that bracket right on up there. Oh, we have a little bit one too many, but all right, so there's those brackets closed up. So now we need to go to the next set of the program, which is flashing one. So we're gonna go void crossing, if I can type, flashing one, then we're gonna establish our integers. And then we'll need to do our bracket. All right, so here's where it gets tricky. So we know that the typical crossing signal has flashing lights. So how do we do that in an Arduino? Well, it's actually really, really simple. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that the lights are one way for half a second and the lights are another way for a half a second. I did some testing and a half a second looks pretty prototypical in my opinion. You can adjust it a little bit um, just by adjusting the delay time that we'll put in here shortly. So let's go ahead and type digital right red one high. Remember that's off. And then digital right red two low. So that means that light is off. And then we're going to type in the power as high and then we'll want to put here's where we do our flashing portion so we put a delay of 500 and then if I can type a semicolon it's a regular colon right there this is half of the flashing signal and it goes for 0 0.5 seconds. Now if you remember correctly that Arduino's measure seconds in or measure time in milliseconds so that's 500 is half a second and then we're going to go digital right red one low And then digital right, red two, high. 
and of course power high and then we'll put another delay of 500 now you may say hey that only flashes once well this is a loop program so we're gonna say that this will loop until a condition is met that would change it okay so we've established our flashing signal so it'll go half second one way half second the other way half second one way so on and so forth and now we need to say what's going to change it so what we're going to say is we're going to say if value a1 is greater than 500 remember because this is since pin 1 which is value a1 getting tripped and greater than 500 means that it's no longer being tripped and value a2 is less than 500 then we're going to put a little bracket right there scroll down a little bit we're going to say that the crossing state is equal to st underscore flashing three and that's the only where place it can change so what we're saying right there is that if since pin two is crossed after since pin one has been crossed nothing changes until since pin one is no longer tripped once since pin one is no longer tripped then it's going to go to crossing state flashing three so flashing three is our final before it goes back to being off. Um, so we're gonna do that. And that's it for the flashing one. Now the really cool thing about this program that makes it actually a lot easier than the block signal is I am going to just take this and I'm gonna copy it. And then I'm just gonna do this and then we just need to adjust it. So we know that this is flashing two now, and all of this is the same. And then we just need to reverse our greater thans and less thans. And that's the best part about that. So we just went it from uh, the since pin one tripping to since pin two tripping. And now we're going to do it again. We're just going to copy. That's the only thing we need to make sure that we need to do is put two more brackets. And then we just need to do copy and then put it again. And we're going to do crossing state three. So now we just need to say that this goes back to being off once both of these are greater than 500. So that's it for the program. Um, it's pretty much the same as the block signal program minus what you're doing with the lights and what you're naming stuff. So we're gonna test this and make sure it works. Okay, so the sketch at least works, and I'm gonna go ahead and upload this to the Arduino, and we're gonna go test it out on the circuit. Okay, everyone, here comes the big moment of truth. We're gonna test this thing out right here. Now, I'm gonna do this a little differently than the block signal. I'm actually gonna use a 12 volt DC power supply just to show you guys that you do not need a computer connected to an Arduino to make it work. All right, so let's plug this thing right on in. All right, we're gonna give it a moment to boot up. 
All right, let's uh, see if it works. I'm gonna wave this right over here. And look at that, we got a flashing signal right there. All right, and we're gonna wave it over the second sensor. And it turns right off, look at that. All right, let's try it from the other direction. I'll wave it over this sensor and you can see it turns on. Then we're gonna wave it over the other sensor. And it turns off. So that is how you make a circuit for an Arduino-based grade crossing. I hope this helps you out in your model railroading and building your own grade crossings. If you have any questions or any ideas on how I can improve this, leave that in the comments below. I welcome it and I love new ideas and new challenges. Thank you guys so much for watching. A reminder, I do have that 500 subscriber contest, so if you haven't done it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that bell icon. Until next time, this is Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Happy railroading.